So the DNC convention is taking place this week, obviously, and we've seen some fact checks from mainstream media outlets of some of the speakers. And I've got to say, we need fact checkers for fact checkers, because for some reason, I get the sense that mainstream media's fact checkers are going out of their way to prioritize neutrality over objectivity. And I don't really know why this is. Maybe they're concerned that if they're too charitable to Democrats, that they'll come off as biased or if they're truthful, since Democrats don't lie as much as Republicans, you know, Republicans will whine about them being biased. I don't know. But at the end of the day, the job of a fact checker is to check facts. They need to put aside partisan biases in order to objectively determine whether or not a statement is true or false. And it doesn't matter if you end up attributing more false claims to Republicans than Democrats on average or vice versa, because what matters is that you are being objective, not neutral, not subjective, but objective. You don't try to be more charitable to one side for the sake of fairness, if that's what they're even doing. You have to be objective. This is a fact check. Now, I don't know what to say about some of these fact checks that we've been seeing lately. I'm kind of scratching my head because they're really bizarre. So let me show you what I mean. So Brian Butler shared some examples of fact checks on Twitter. And suffice to say, these fact checks need to be fact checked. So Amy Gardner of the New York Times dinged Biden for saying Donald Trump says he will refuse to accept the election results if he loses again. He said this during his DNC speech. Now, she adds, but that's not true. Trump just hasn't said that he would accept, and he has previously said the only way he loses is if Democrats cheat. Okay, so to be overly charitable to the fact checker here, if you're splitting hairs, it's technically true that Trump hasn't explicitly said that he wouldn't accept the results of the election if he loses. As Gardner pointed out, he just hasn't committed to accepting the results if he loses. Having said that, though, even though Biden isn't speaking with the utmost specificity here, what he's saying is effectively correct. By not committing to accepting the results of the election, he is inadvertently admitting that he won't accept the results of the election. Therefore, one can logically deduce that he is functionally taking the position that he will not accept the results of the election, which is a reasonable assumption for the fact that he literally did not accept the results of the last fucking election. Am I going crazy here? But since he explicitly didn't say, I will not accept the results of this next election if I lose, I guess Biden's statement, you know, it's technically untrue to be fair to the fact checker, which is a fine assessment for a fact checker to make. But you can't just leave it at that. You have to provide readers with the necessary and additional context so that way they know why Biden said what he said and Trump's past behavior. And for those wondering, this was Trump's most recent comments about whether or not he'll accept the results of the election if he loses. If you lose this election, will it have been legitimate? If I see that we had a fair and free election, which I hope to be able to say. But if I see that, I will be, you will never see anybody more honorable than me. I'm an honorable person. You see the report that came out on Biden today from Congress but with you, all of the money that was stolen. But you didn't accept the results of the last election. Well, that's right, because there were many problems with the last election. You know it. Even so though they, all of so the legal everybody. cases were dropped. No, no, they weren't brought because the judges wouldn't take them because they said it was after the election. Well, how else are you going to find out cheating until after the election? I think things have been done over the last four-year period that will make this a free and fair election. And certainly, I, if, if for some reason I lose, and I think if I lose, this country will go into a tailspin, the likes of which it's never seen before, the likes of 1929. Fact check, he didn't lose because judges wouldn't take up the cases because they said it happened after the election. That doesn't even make sense. He lost 60 plus court cases because he had zero evidence, nothing. But I guess as long as he doesn't explicitly say, I, Donald J. Trump, am going to reject the results of the next election, we should all just assume that there's nothing to worry about, right? But I mean, even though that fact check felt like she was trying to nuance troll. I'll grant them that it's still technically correct, right? But 
I can't say the same for this next fact check from PolitiFact. Quote, a DNC video showed a 2016 clip of Trump saying there has to be some form of punishment for women who have abortions. He walked back the comment the same day. We found no evidence that he currently supports legal penalties for women who have abortions. Okay, that's all well and good. But regardless if he walked it back or not, he still said it. That's objectively true. But in that tweet, they link to a 2023 fact check where they come to the same conclusion after Biden referenced the same statement again. The headline reads, video shows Donald Trump believes there has to be some form of punishment for women who have abortions. And then they rate it as mostly false. But I mean, what's false about that? He literally said there should be some form of punishment for women who have abortions. Let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth, just in case anyone hasn't heard this clip or, or seen what he said, even though I feel like all of us have. But, you know, let's just be extra scrupulous here. Here's what he said. There has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. Ten cents, ten, ten years. years. I don't what? know. That I don't know. So there it is. Clear as day. But since he walked it back, it's mostly false to say that Trump said women should be punished for having abortions. So if he walks it back, then I guess that deletes his previous comment out of our minds and it's vetoed. We don't get to talk about it ever again. It's been, you know, struck, struck from the record. OK, I write that fact check pants on fire because that's embarrassing. But The Washington Post also came to that exact same conclusion, namely because Trump walked back that statement. So I guess if you say somebody said something it becomes incorrect so long as they walk it back. Okay, that's how it works, cool. Now, speaking of the Washington Post, they fact-checked Hillary Clinton, who said that Trump sent love letters to Kim Jong-un during her DNC speech. But that's wrong, according to the fact-checkers at the Washington Post, because, quote, there's no evidence Trump sent such letters. Clinton is making a bit of a leap to suggest that Trump has written love letters to dictators. Clinton appears to be referring to a 2018 comment from Trump about North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Quote, we fell in love, okay? No, really. He wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters. We fell in love. That's certainly an unusual statement, but he's referring to letters written by Kim. We do not know what Trump wrote to Kim or other dictators for that matter. Now, the problem with this fact check is that Trump did send letters to Kim Jong-un, and we know what he said in said letters because it's public knowledge. In fact, here's the letter. Now, I'm not going to read it, but as you can see, he was being complimentary towards Kim Jong-un in this letter. So, I mean, if you're being overly nitpicky, you can say that Clinton was being hyperbolic by calling this a love letter, but I don't think that was ever a question. When she says that he wrote love letters to Kim Jong-un, most people aren't assuming that she is literally suggesting that that's actually a love letter where he talked about wanting to whisper sweet nothings into Kim's ear and be inside of him. I don't think anybody is coming away with that conclusion. The point that she was trying to make was that he was sucking up to a dictator. Now, I actually don't like that attack on Trump because I think it's inherently hawkish and it suggests that presidents shouldn't be working to ease tensions with leaders of other countries. So I don't like the attack on Trump and I don't like Clinton. I'm no defender of Clinton. But when it comes to her statement, what she's saying is true, albeit purposefully hyperbolic. But that doesn't make it untrue. If you're with your friends and you say, man, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse, you're not gonna call your friend a liar and say, um, actually, it's logistically impossible for a human being to consume a whole horse, because that's, that's weird, right? You're going to interpret what they're saying is, man, I'm really hungry. And that's what I think most reasonable people will do when they hear Clinton's comments. Interpret her love letter remark as a dig against Trump for cozying up to dictators. But apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently they have to spell it out and say, no, actually, um, we don't know what he wrote to Kim Jong-un, even though we do know what he wrote to Kim Jong-un. And he definitely didn't write a love letter to Kim Jong-un. Um, OK, thank you. Thank you for clarifying. I needed to know that Trump wasn't literally... <laughs> spelling out his undying love for Kim Jong-un and told him how much he was in love with him and wanted to leave Melania to be with him. I mean, Jesus Christ, what are we doing here? But there's more. Judd Legum shared several examples of very idiotic fact checks from the Washington Post on the first night of the DNC. 
And apparently it's wrong to say that Trump told us to inject bleach into our bodies. So the Washington Post says that that's an exaggerated claim, saying Trump did not say people should inject bleach into their bodies. Instead, at a pandemic briefing in 2020, he spoke confusingly of an injection inside of lungs with a disinfectant. He made the remarks after an aide presented a study showing how bleach could kill the virus when it remained on surfaces. Trump later claimed he was speaking sarcastically though he seemed serious at the time. So you might seem a little bit confused because they literally describe him asking about injecting bleach since it kills COVID on surfaces. So why is it wrong to say that Trump told us to inject bleach? Well, because he didn't tell us to inject bleach. He was asking whether or not we should consider injecting bleach as a cure for COVID. See for yourself. So supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who could. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. One minute, and is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. <laughs> Very funny. I'm laughing because he said it's being sarcastic. Very good joke there. Good stuff. But as you saw, the fact checkers did not accept someone at the DNC saying that he told us to inject bleach because he framed it as more of a question. It was more like, should we inject bleach? In other words, fact checkers are using semantics to designate a true statement as incorrect. I mean, the level of charitability here towards Donald Trump is truly something to behold. And you're already familiar with these comments from him by now. So, you know. We know what he said, but the fact that they're going out of their way to ascribe lies to Democrats, presumably to appease Trump, who would whine if they said that this was true. I just I don't know what to make of it, honestly. It's deeply disingenuous. That's not to say that Democrats never lie, to be clear, because they do. But you shouldn't tell your readers that they're lying when they're making correct statements. But let me just quickly go through some other examples so you know that what I just showed you, those examples aren't outliers. So you know how Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, alleged that Trump privately called fallen soldiers suckers and losers? Well, Biden said that during his DNC speech, and according to the Washington Post, it's wrong for Biden to say that Trump called them suckers and losers because Trump vehemently denied that story. And since he denied it, you can't confirm with certainty that he said it. So in order to technically be correct, you have to say that John Kelly said Trump said fallen soldiers were suckers and losers. Otherwise, it's incorrect. OK. There's more. Political scientist Miranda Yaver shared a fact check from The New York Times where they called this comment from Biden misleading, where he says Trump created the largest debt any president had in four years with his two trillion dollar tax cut for the wealthy. Now, it's misleading, according to The New York Times, because even though they admit that it's literally a true statement, mind you, well, you see, debt rose more over Obama's eight years than the four years that Biden referenced, but that's irrelevant because Biden said four years, not eight years. So why are you even mentioning that? But they did say that it was higher under George H.W. Bush as a percentage. But Biden didn't specify whether he was talking about a percentage or a raw number. So calling it misleading is absurd when what he said is true. I think offering clarification and additional context is fine, but saying it's misleading, that's a lie. The fact checker is lying here, but there's another one. They say Biden's claim that Trump wants to cut Medicare is false. Why? Well, because when he was president, Trump released annual budgets that proposed cutting Medicare, but he has repeatedly pledged throughout the 2024 presidential campaign that he will not cut the program. So this is another instance of, hey, Trump said it, so it must be true. But even though he has repeatedly tried to cut Medicare as president, it's apparently false to suggest that he wants to do it again because he simply says he won't. I mean, when has Trump ever lied, right? Now, 
even if you take Trump at your word, which you should never do, the problem with this fact check is that it fails to acknowledge Trump saying multiple times during this cycle that he would cut Medicare. One last question. Go ahead. Entitlements ever be on your plane? Uh, at some point, they will be. We have tremendous growth. We're going to have tremendous growth this next year. I, it'll be toward the end of the year. The growth is going to be incredible. And at the right time, we will take a look at that. You know, that's actually the easiest of all things, if you look, because it's such if a you're big willing percentage. to do some of the if you if you don't cut something in entitlements, you'll never really deal with. Oh, the we'll debt. be cutting, but we're also going to have growth like you've never had before. You changed your your outlook on how to handle entitlement, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Mr. President, it seems like it, it, something has to be done or else we're going to be at a, stuck at 120 percent of, of debt to GDP forever. So, first of all, there is a lot you can do in terms of entitlements, in terms of cutting. And Oops. I guess it's uh, false to say that he said he wants to cut Medicare because he said he wants to uh, look at cutting entitlements, maybe. Is that what they're going for? Tomato, tomato, is that the argument they're making? Look, this is ridiculous. He said multiple times on the campaign trail he's open to cutting Medicare. Anything that they say otherwise is literally just spin at the behest of of Donald Trump. But I've got one more for you. And this isn't necessarily a fact check related to the DNC, but nonetheless, it's a very egregious one and it speaks to the issue that I'm pointing out with fact checkers here. So according to Snopes, Trump did not call neo-Nazis and white supremacists very fine people. And Snopes rated the claim false because in a news conference after the rally protesting the planned removal of a Confederate statue, Trump did say there were very fine people on both sides, referring to protesters and the counter protesters he said in the same statement he wasn't talking about neo-nazis and white nationalists who he said should be condemned totally oh okay so it seems like we were all misremembering what he said so to be clear he wasn't referring to the neo-nazis who marched with tiki torches through charlottesville at the unite the right rally when he said there were very fine people on both sides when he said there are very fine people he was talking about the counter protesters that makes so much sense but uh, I've got a question for you, Snopes. Why don't we take things a step further? Why don't you tell us who those counter-protesters are, Snopes? Why don't you say what their ideology was, Snopes? Because the anti-racist protesters showed up to protest the presence of Nazis in their town, and the counter-protesters, counter to the anti-racist protesters, mind you, were there to stand in solidarity with the neo-Nazis who opposed the Robert E. Lee statue coming down. Now, if the counter protesters stood in solidarity with the Nazis and agreed with the Nazis and they were opposed to the anti-racists who were opposed to the Nazis, what exactly does that make the counter protesters that he called very fine people, Snopes? What does that make them, Snopes? Tell us. It makes them Nazis. In fact, one of those Nazis was James Field Jr., who drove his car into a crowd of anti-racist protesters and injured 35 people and killed one of them, Heather Heyer. This is a neo-Nazi who represents one side of the very fine people Trump was referring to. But listen, you've got to be careful because if you say Trump called the neo-Nazis with tiki torches very fine people, that's a lie. He only called the people who showed up to support the cause of the neo-Nazis with tiki torches very fine people. So, uh... Yeah. Needless to say, it seems like nonstop accusations of bias from the right has rattled these fact checkers, because why else would they be going out of their way to be so charitable to Donald Trump? It's possible that they're not being purposefully dishonest for the sake of appearing more neutral. Maybe they're just stupid. That's entirely possible. But I'm assuming that they don't want to appear partisan. And being honest about who is and isn't lying makes them look ostensibly partisan because Republicans just lie more. So if you're trying to just determine who lies more, well, it's going to be Republicans more so than Democrats. And they want Republicans to read their outlets as well and trust them. So, you know, they've got to throw Republicans a bone from time and again, I guess. I don't know. But I mean, in trying to not look partisan... If that's what they're even trying to do here, this is my speculation. But if they're really trying to not look partisan, they're being 
partisan, either wittingly or unwittingly, and it's a disservice to the people who are reading them because people trust them. When you say you're fact-checking somebody, there's a veneer of legitimacy to it. So to go out of your way, to bend over backwards, to be charitable to a liar like Donald Trump and say that somebody like Biden was lying when he says a particular statement when he's not, that's pretty fucked up. So I'm not saying here that all fact checkers are bad, but what I am saying, saying is that fact checkers, like everyone else, they're just human beings. They're not perfect. They have subjective biases like the rest of us. And it's no longer wise to not read past the headlines of these fact checks from Snopes, from PolitiFact. Don't just look at, you know, the pants on fire. Don't just read the headline from the Washington Post or the New York Times. You actually need to read the fact check itself and see why they say something is true or false. Make the determination yourself because it seems like media's desire to prioritize neutrality over objectivity is biasing their fact checks. We don't want bullshit or spin. We want fact checks. Otherwise, it's not a fact check. It's an opinion piece. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching, so I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.